send more Russians to Ukraine. We want to do more. Vans Without Borders, a humanitarian aid team who heads to the hotspot areas of Ukraine to give out everything and anything to those in need. So I'm Jack and this is... Phantom. Justin. Edward. Nick. These are the holes you dig through to get the fish. If you're brave enough to fight Russians, just don't help Ukraine. Sit on the couch and watch TV, fight for human rights, and be prepared to fight Russians. So while we were back in Kiev, we met up with our friend Artem. So Artem was the soldier who took us into Butra and Irpin just a few days after he had been fighting there. And we got in before the residents were allowed back in to go and survey the area and then come back a couple of days later to deliver aid. So he's a great guy. It's been great to catch up with him. He also helps us with military permissions in certain areas and intel. So he very kindly gave us an interview and told us what was going on with him at the moment. If you will not help Ukraine now, you will fight Russia in five years. So you are thinking about uh, human rights, transgenders, uh, feminists and stuff, and you are not thinking about your country. You know Kaliningrad? Yeah. There, there is a, a small separated piece of Russia in the middle of, of Europe. Mm -hmm. So they have all the, all the missiles uh, in there. Mm -hmm. So if you are not helping, Ukraine now. Just be aware that uh, London mm. is in the range mm. range of, of that mm. missiles sitting in Kaliningrad. Mm. So, if you don't help us now, nobody gonna help you mm. in five years. Today it's Ukraine. Tomorrow it's it's Poland, Germany. They don't have a real army now. So. I don't know. We have already destroyed more planes that the British army has in total. And Russia keeps fighting. What often isn't covered is the Ukrainian army is the first line of humanitarian aid for the Ukrainian people. When they get sent their rations, they often split it in half, take half of their troops and give half to the local people. And so we make an effort to try and help the army where we can. So we're just giving some supplies to soldiers at the front so different medications and some food. A lot of them are sometimes worse off than the people they're meant to be protecting because the people they're protecting, if they still have their homes, they have all their possessions. A lot of the time the soldiers come, they've had to buy their own kit, which is often very basic or not suitable. And they don't have things like thermals, they don't have access to things like washing machines again. If they have a uniform, they probably only have that one uniform. And so it's, it's quite a depressing situation to be in. Putin. Невероятно, но факт. Нам снова угрожают немецкими танками «Леопард», на борту которых кресты. Lots of people in the West say Vladimir Putin's crazy, he's sick. What's your take on him? Well, he's just not a real man. So I'm inviting him officially to visit his soldiers near Bakhmut. Be a man, just come to Bakhmut. Send more Russians to Ukraine. И вновь собираются воевать с Россией на земле Украины руками последующей Гитлера, руками бандеровцев. Слава Украине! We're fighting Russians, we know how to fight them. They're afraid of us. Putin! We're in war! You already have scary stories about Azov Regiment. That they're all fascists and stuff, but... No, they're just professionals. Talk about Ukraine. 
it's not about tanks or military equipment, artillery pieces. Just talk about it. Some of the units are immensely well kitted out, but it really is luck of the draw as to where you get assigned to. Uh, so we do what we can to try and alleviate pressure for the army. So our thinking is if we can go and help them by bringing them a load of sleeping bags, uh, which aren't suitable for civilians in a lot of areas, it means that they can then keep their costs down in that capacity and maybe spend more of their budget bringing in more food and then they can distribute that to the people as well as supporting themselves. Just seen there's been an incoming over there, so an artillery barrage. Yes, yeah, the remnants of it there. Looks like it's attacking a gas pipe. That gas pipe's on fire. Going all up there. Just seen a load of ambulances come as well, but you can smell the gas from here. Yeah. So you can see what they make their bridges out of. So amongst the frozen river, there's these barges. So they a pontoon bridge, thank you very much. As you see that other bridge has been blown. We're scouting around the area, trying to get to one village, the road was blocked. Tried to get to another village, the road was blocked. Then we ended up in somewhere called Ray Gonadoc. I think I butchered the pronunciation there. And that was a small, small housing area, usual Soviet blocks of flats uh, near Le Mans. And these people had, you know, they lived in the basements of buildings. When we turned up, it was a ghost town. No one was there. We were about to leave. And then people started coming out of the remnants of the buildings. I'm glad we went there, I'm glad we made the effort to venture further afield because it was heartbreaking seeing the conditions these people lived in. You've got people who are pumping water out of drains, um, you know, as their daily water. People living in flats with the sides of the building missing and they put up bits of plastic or curtains to try and shield them from the elements. And it was, you know, minus four, minus five when we were there. Inside the buildings it's even colder. And it really puts into perspective how people are going to struggle and they are struggling and they're going to struggle for a long time because it, these places are never going to be rebuilt in the near future uh, while the war rages on and people are reduced to living in rubble. Slava Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! You Slava. Slava. A little community here shelling just a few few miles in that direction or whichever direction it's coming from. It's an awful noise to hear. Going on, no one else is bothered to come here. It's not a big headline town. People don't seem to care, but as I said, we're here to tell their story. That is the site of a missile getting shot down. Ukrainian fire, Russian missile. We'll be taking those puppies out of the sky. We had another team member join us, a mouse, and then he evaded us for a couple of weeks, but at some point he's managed to drop out and go. But it was quite frustrating because it ruined some of our body armour because we had knee pads, and so we managed to get rid of the first nest, thought the mouse was gone. Wanted to put a dog in the van, but in the end I thought, no, I'm sure it's gone. Then we found out, oh no, heard a bit of scrabbling. Took everything out, looked again, and made a nest in um, a knee pad, as I said, which is quite annoying. They're quite hard to actually get decent ones. So we had to chuck that out, and then, as I said, at some point in Ukraine, we've hit a pothole, and wherever the little bastard was hiding, he's now gone. So we got put up in a hotel last night by a friend we met, and... Uh, we were just out grabbing some food after we distributed aid and we got a phone call from him saying that the hotel that we were staying at was just about to get targeted. So we rushed back to the hotel and grabbed all our kit. Um, we got out of there safe, I think everyone else as well did. A bit of a burden, um, but you know, we'll always go for safety over taking the risk. There's no point sort of shrugging intel off like that because you know, what if it did get hit that night that we were staying there? You know, and, and, and that would be both our lives, you know, ended. So really grateful for the phone call. We're in Kharkiv, um, temperatures way below minus. This lake has frozen over. Chap over there doing some fishing. The situation out here is pretty dire. Be how they're trying to get food to survive. These are the holes they dig through to get the fish. This lane is, it's the suicide highway. So we've just seen this truck try and overtake another 20 ton truck while you still got oncoming traffic. It's a two lane road. <laughs> this truck's coming on both sides and there's no street lights. I don't think there were street lights before the war, but now especially not so, because any ones which did exist have been taken down. How are you feeling, Clinton? Yeah, scared. Then that drops in, mate, they really are. <laughs> He's going for it again. He's just overtaken, just in time. Oh, and nearly died. <laughs> because they don't slow down, they speed up. 
No, that's not us being British and snobbish or whatever. You speak to the Ukrainians, they say all their drivers are mad as well. But, you know, it's a big concern for us because obviously we put our lives in danger almost every day out here at the front. And we have been in a few smashes over here, but if I die in a crash, I'm not going to be very happy.